Three professors and researchers spent a year submitting a series of hoax papers, including a rewrite of Hitler's Mein Kampf, to top academic journals to see if they would accept and print history's worst ideas, so long as you change the targets. This isn't like we just took Mein Kampf word for word and swapped out uh, the Nazi party or our movement with intersectional feminism, although that was the first stage of writing it. There's a lot more that went into it. So the main part is that much of Hitler's tone, language, and mostly his politics of grievance were preserved. The trio of scholars submitted 20 papers over the course of a year before being caught. They say disciplines like race and gender studies have been taken over by radical and intolerant theories that put the blame of all of society's problems on white men. Another paper submitted suggested that racial collective punishment was a way to correct past inequality. It was sent back for revisions, but not for the reasons you might expect. They said that the issue was that we were being too compassionate, therefore we were recentering the needs of the privileged students. The three say this goes much further than little-known journals. The ideas published here are picked up by media and republished, and even by politicians, forcing academic definitions of race and privilege into the mainstream, where they have different meanings but are seen and used by millions. My job is to shut other white people down when they want to say, oh no, I'm not prejudiced. I'm a Democrat. I'm accepting. My job is to make sure that they get, that they have privilege. It is a kind of idea laundering, if you want to put it in parallel to money laundering. You take prejudices, start with what you want to conclude doctor it up in the academic way, feed it into their system, and it comes out the other side looking like knowledge, ready to be used by policymakers, by activists. The three allege that these radical ideas are driving a political backlash as the wider society recoils against them. An even smaller subset becomes politically radicalized and reactionary against these ideas. The journals in question have since retracted the papers and expressed disappointment that the hoax violated academic ethics. The scholars' response for the hoax say they expect to become academic pariahs. But in an era of fake news, fake knowledge may be just as big of a threat. Aria Levin,